Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Many of us struggle with sales, whether it's from confidence, comfort, and just not wanting to be salesy. We want to help our customers. We know we can, but we complicate the process. This podcast is designed to help professionals like you improve at sales through process, practice, frameworks, and thinking differently about what you already know. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and with me is the founder of Catalyst Sale, Mike Simmons. Hello, Mike. Hey, Jody. Mike, I was listening to a podcast recently. I do believe it was with, it might have been, it was Freakonomics, I think. Yeah. And they said the, the key to good putting is leg strength. So next time you're at the gym, maybe work on that. Jody, we've been talking for 20 minutes, 32 minutes to be exact. And uh, this did not come up other than the Freakonomics thing. And I thought you were going to talk about fact checking. And now you bring up my putting stroke. Is this because you're expecting that sometime in the next six months we might be uh, we might have round two of our our competition? Well, I just know that anyone that's listened to the show regularly knows you used to talk smack about when we would finally play miniature golf, and then we finally played, and you just didn't perform well. So I thought our friend listening would also want to know. I'm just trying to help you out. It's awesome. Sean's got a friend. His name's Aaron that uh, comes over every once in a while. And, and Aaron, uh, we hadn't seen him in a, in a number of months. We saw him just a couple of days ago. And he, he first thing he says to me, he goes, I see you're still not working legs. <laughs> like, so awesome. Yep. Always skipping leg day. Well, maybe rethink that. I absolutely should rethink that. So uh, skipping leg day could perhaps be considered a mistake, which brings us into our topic for this episode. And that is mistakes. Mike, this is something people are interested in. If you make mistakes, what do you do with it? Do you, you cover it up? Do you move on? Do you act like it didn't happen? Do you come clean? How? What's the best way to handle mistakes? Yeah, and this really, this comes from Christine Rogers. It was a, a message I posted on Twitter where I asked some folks if they had any specific topics that you're just not hearing people talk enough about or share enough practical information around. And she came up and she said, Something she's been thinking a lot about is mistakes, and you know why is it that we don't talk about them? What happens when they happen? How do you adjust? Do you admit it? Do you just press on? And I think it's a, a really interesting conversation. I can tell you, early on in my career, I would just gloss over them and hope nobody saw it. I'd be like, "Oh, okay, I made a mistake. Maybe I can get away with it. We'll deal with it." We'll deal with it if it comes up. Now I'm much more comfortable. And I don't know if it's because I've gotten a little bit older. I don't know if it's because I have a little bit more experience. I don't know if it's because my confidence has increased. I don't know what it is specifically, other than I do know that in the context of learning, it is pretty cool to be able to share stories of where things worked out or where things didn't work out, lessons learned from those in a manner where people hopefully we'll avoid those mistakes in the future, or at least be aware of potential mistakes that might occur if they haven't thought through things completely. So I think it's important for us to be transparent and open as it relates to those, those mistakes. Now, there's a time and a place, and it's easier for me to say it doing what I'm doing now than it would have been if I you know, was in the, my first you know, three weeks working at Smart Force as an inside learning consultant, it would have been, it's, it's easier now to own up to mistakes today than it was back then. But we can all learn from each other's mistakes and learn from the stories that relate to those mistakes. So I think they're important to share. I think there's maybe two categories of mistakes I would like you to talk about, Mike. One is current mistakes yep, and the other is historical mistakes. So current mistakes being, oh no, I just screwed up. How do I keep this from Mike or how do I tell Mike? So that's the battle on a current mistake. Historical mistakes are what do you do with them? Do you just try to act like they never happened? So let's do current mistakes. What do you do? If you mess up now, what's what's the best way to handle it? Yeah, there's a, um, there are a number of different challenges that you might run into with the mistake. So if it's a mistake that happens that you are unable to fix or address on your own, 
then it's important to get other people involved as quickly as possible. And don't, you know, don't continue to make the mistake bigger than it already is. So don't build on it. And, you know, what's the old saying? If you find yourself in a hole, don't keep, you know, stop digging. So stop digging, stop building on that mistake and hoping that things are just going to fix themselves. Reach out to others, bring somebody else on your team, whether it's someone who's had this, a similar role, it's your leader inside the organization, whatever it is, lean on others to help stop the bleeding, so to speak, and get things and get things turned around. If it's a mistake that you can fix immediately, my recommendation would be to fix it and take care of it because there's no reason to have it just kind of sit out there and get worse on its own while you wait for a group of people to deliberate on whatever your next steps are. So it depends on the scope of the mistake, depends on the type of mistake, and it depends on your capability to go through and fix it. Like, let's just, let's say one mistake that I made when I was, a, again, individual contributor working at a company called Skillsoft, I sent an email that I thought was going to the internal team and I copied our external team. So not only did I share this with our internal team of people, I shared information with our client at the same time. And it was, uh, it, it was not professional. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. I should have checked my email to make sure that when I replied, I didn't reply to everybody who was on the email strand. And as soon as I noticed it, I, I went back to the people who shouldn't have been on there and responded back and said, I, mistake, I inadvertently included you on this email. It was unprofessional for me to do so. I'm sorry. And I forget the specific details, what, what I said in that specific, I'm sorry. And ultimately what I did is I reinforced the relationship. I owned up to a mistake. Things moved forward. It wasn't significant. I mean, I just, I, I responded on some things that related to considerations relative to a, a deal, deal that we were working on. And ultimately I share, overshared, I shared information that we would not have wanted them to have access to. And you know, in the spirit of the types of mistakes that could be made, I mean, nobody died from it. Nobody was sick. Nobody lost their job. I mean, it wasn't significant, but owning up to it at that point in time was, was important. And it actually helped build a greater level of credibility and trust in that relationship. Well, that's good advice. And I like that you gave a specific example. And I was jotting some things down as you were talking. So this is part what Mike told us and then part some additions of my own. I think fix it if you can. Mike said that. If you make a mistake and you can fix it, fix it. You should also admit it rather than cover it up. Mike, what do you do if if you make a mistake and it would be easy enough to not? So if you have a supervisor, you make a mistake, it impacts a few people, you fix it right away. It'd be pretty easy for them not to know. You tell them? I'd like to say that every time I would tell them, but I am sure that there are going to be times where I go through and I say, okay, well, what are the actual implications? Does this create more noise than is necessary? If they found out about it, would their surprise be frustrating? If I'm going through the mental, would you, you call that mental tongue fu? I said <laughs> mental jujitsu on a previous podcast. If I'm going through this mental challenge of should I say it or shouldn't I, I would default towards saying it and you know, just letting people know. Now, there are a number of ways to admit to these mistakes, though. It's not like sending an, entire, an email out to the entire company, letting everybody know that you did something, but having a conversation with your boss around it, yeah, that probably makes sense. So there's a time and a place for each of those, and there's a forum to deliver it. So that could be sending it in a text message might not be a great way to do it because that could be mis either misunderstood or misinterpreted. Jumping on a phone call might be one thing. Getting into a Zoom call where they can see your nonverbal and they can see the interaction, that would be another thing. So time and a place to deliver those doesn't mean that you have to tell the entire organization, but probably telling the person who you wouldn't want to be surprised by that and owning up to it. That makes sense. All right. That's a good one. So admit it. The other one, I think, is you can't get defensive. If you admit it and it frustrates someone, you're just going to make it worse getting defensive. And as Mike talked about, what's you have to think about what are people going to think when they find out you didn't tell them you made a mistake. I feel quite often the cover-up and the consequences of not admitting something can be greater than the mistake itself. Yeah. I mean, there's the, as you were talking through it, 
you know, the thing that comes to comes to mind is you know when you're when you're admitting this mistake, are you doing it for them, for the person on the other end, or are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for the customer, or are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for the leader inside the organization, or are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for the team, or are you doing it for yourself? If you're doing it for yourself, the that person who gains the greatest amount of value in sharing that is you. Maybe it doesn't make sense to to share that. Be be cautious or be cognizant of that. If you're doing it for them because it puts them in a better position to handle something if something else comes up downstream or down the road or so that they're not going to be surprised, then absolutely share. But that's going to be another kind of decision point that you're going to use as you start to say, do I own up to this? And my default would be own up to it. You just own up to it. You did it. Mistakes happen. I mean, mistakes, mistakes are going to happen. And that's what they are. They're not, it's mistakes aren't necessarily intended. If you did something by mistake with intention, then that's a completely different kind of environment. That's not or a completely different thing. And I forget the word. What's the word for like intentionally trying to break stuff? That's not a mistake. That's destructive. And yeah, so mistakes happen. And the person on the other end has made mistakes before, I'm sure, in their life. You know, as a leader, we all make mistakes. I mean, sometimes I get really transparent in the information that I'll share with people in the conversations. Sometimes I'll go a little bit further outside the box of what we're supposed to share or what information is shared. And sometimes I might say things that are part of a development plan, but for whatever reason, we we did not execute or we won't execute on those. So you come back and you own up and say, hey, I, I was mistaken. We thought we were going to have this done in a six-month period and it actually took us 12 months to do it or we're still working through it. It's been deprioritized. So there are a number of different ways that those mistakes will happen both as an individual contributor and as the leader inside organizations. Okay, let's turn to historical mistakes. That's when you've made a mistake in the past and do you, I guess you don't walk around telling everybody, hey, I made a mistake, but do you cover those things up or do you, do you come clean and say it happened? I, I know a lot of us get embarrassed by things we've done in the past. And if it's kind of nice to have a environment where nobody knows, but how do you view historical mistakes? Well, one thing, I'm happy that cell phones didn't exist when I was in high school and when I was in college, because I mean, there's some stuff that I'm, it's probably good that's not on video or hasn't been recorded for, for the world to see or be shared. So, I mean, again, we all make mistakes. We all do stupid things. Yeah. So at some point, I mean, some of us, I guess, maybe are fortunate enough to never have made a mistake or never do something stupid. I've not met anybody like that, but I'm sure there's somebody out there who is perfect. I, I imagine your granny was probably pretty perfect, Jody. Oh, she was close, or as she would say, pert near. See, she was pert near. And you know, so when it comes to historic mistakes that you've made, I think that's where people can learn some really amazing lessons from you. You know, when you share the mistake of, trying to cut corners or rush through things or you know I've been late for things so I've sped through the neighborhood and I've gotten caught and that kind of stuff so you share those mistakes with others and they can learn from them but again I'd go back through that challenge of saying is it for you or is it for them if it's for the good of the person who you're sharing it with great help them learn help them move forward if you're just sharing because you want some sympathy from somebody, or you want someone to commiserate with you, or you want to dump something on them, then I'd uh, I would challenge you to say whether or not it makes a lot of sense to bring those things back up. The reason I like sharing historical mistakes is it just helps other people. If you can share that you made a similar mistake, there's a time you don't want to just walk around telling everyone, "Hey, look at this! I goofed up ten years ago." But if you can use that to help other people that are in a similar situation or to create empathy or to show, I did this, but I got out of it, here's how, historical mistakes are, are wonderful rather than cover them up. And quite often, they create a, a good story. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So on the, the topic of mistakes, you saw this on Twitter. You pulled this from Twitter. Do you think we've We've covered mistakes. Is there anything else we need to discuss with mistakes? I'm looking at it. I'm just looking at the stream and I'll add a link to this, but 
you know, Andy added something in here around transparency and humility. And I think you know, it's important. I know we've talked a bit about authenticity before, and sometimes you can pull in transparency in there. Sometimes people are ready for transparency and sometimes they're not. And we've got a link to an episode that we can put out there related to that. So I don't think there's anything to add there. Also talk, also got into a discussion around ego here. And I actually was on Tanner Brock's podcast that does a leadership. We talked about ego there. So I'll include a link to that discussion. I think Tanner's got some pretty pretty interesting ideas around ego and definition. An acronym that he uses for ego is everyone get out. They're just going to push people out. And as I've shared before, ego is something I've struggled with. You know, a lot of times when I'm going through a decision, I have to ask myself, is my ego getting involved or is loyalty in influencing this? And if it's either of those things, then I need to take a pause and really think through the decisions that I'm making. But just looking at that portion of the thread, and again, we'll, we'll include the link to the thread. I think we've covered everything that I wanted to get into. If somebody else has some ideas or other considerations that we should think about relative to mistakes, just send them to us in the live chat or directly at podcast at catalystsale.com. I'd love to see the feedback. All right. This was a great conversation about mistakes. I'm glad Mike admitted to a mistake and I got to just skate through the episode without admitting one. This, was this, it was it a mistake that you brought up the whole needing to do legs? Uh, not a mistake for me. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Mm-hmm.